Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome to the FSX404 channel. Today we're going to do something special. Today we're going to fly an ARC. To be more specific, we're actually going to do an approach into Sao Paulo, Brazil. The Congoias Airport, we're going to do the India 3 VOR DME Runway 35 approach. Of course, this is a VOR DME approach and that tells us that the equipment we need to do this approach is a VOR and a DME. Preferably, when doing ARCs, it is better to have two VORs, but we don't need two, we only need one. In this case, the Airbus 320 that I'm going to use for this approach, it does have two VORs and we're going to use both of them. Now I'll go into that just in a little bit. Now they have arrival routes in these approach charts. I'm not going to worry too much about that. You guys know how to find those out on your own. Only thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to, I'm going to be coming from Santana VOR and I'm going to be flying to Congoya's VOR on a heading of 138. Once we reach the point 10 or D10 distance 10 from the Congoya's VOR, we're going to do our turn and we're going to enter the arc. Let me just explain something about arcs. Uh, let's take a look at this arc. This is a 8 DME arc, so that's an 8 nautical mile arc. There are a few things to remember about the arcs. First of all, we should know how far to either side of the arc we can go. How far can we be off? The arcs are actually considered to be airways. So technically we have 4 miles on each side of the arc. Now everybody's saying 4 miles, that's halfway to the airport. Yes, it is. Technically, we have 4 miles. But that's not the case with every arc. Even though we have 4 miles on each side, it's not a good idea to be flying 4 miles away uh, from where we're supposed to be on either side. Sometimes these arcs are done in mountainous areas and you have to keep to one side if you have to go plus or minus. To pass your exam, you can be no more than 1 mile on each side of the arc. So in this case, this arc is a 8 DME, so we can be between 7 and 9. Now I said we can be between 7 and 9. So as long as you keep it in between 7 and 9 distance on this arc, you're doing okay. But that's just okay. A good pilot will be able to keep it within a quarter of a mile on each side, which is a 0.25, so 0.3 on each side. So if you really want to test yourself, you want to keep it in between 0.3 miles on each side. It's harder than it sounds, especially when you throw the winds into the picture. Because the winds, the one thing about arcs is that you have to constantly be adjusting Unlike any other approach, where we adjust for the wind once and we don't have to worry about the wind until we do the next turn, in the arc, we're constantly turning. What that means is the wind is coming from a different direction constantly, so we constantly have to adjust. And we'll go into that in just a little bit. How are we going to use the VORs to fly this arc? Well, for this approach in VOR1, I'm going to have the Congoya's VOR tuned in and I'm going to be flying a heading of 138 to it. And that's all I'm going to have initially. Once I reach the point D10, distance 10, I'm going to start a turn to enter the arc. Now during this turn, in my VOR2, now the VOR2 is going to be the needle VOR. It's just going to be like the ADF. It's just going to be a needle pointing to the VOR. So in that VOR2, I'm also going to tune in the Congoya's VOR 116.9er. At the same time, in VOR1, I had a heading of 138 tuned in. In VOR1, I'm going to tune in our final approach heading, which is a heading of 348. So by the time we're starting the arc in VOR1, we're going to have uh, the Congoya's VOR on a heading of 348. And in VOR2, we're also going to have the Congoya's VOR and the VOR2 is going to be just the needle pointing to the VOR. The first thing we have to know about the arc is how do we enter it? The initial entrance, the initial turn, in this case from point D10 to enter the arc, that turn is always done at 90 degrees. So if we're coming from a heading of 138, we're going to turn to a heading of 228 to enter the arc. That's that 90 degree turn. Now it gets a little bit tricky depending on how we do our turn. Sometimes we're going to be ahead of the arc, sometimes we're going to be past the arc. That's fine as long as we do those adjustments. If we pass the arc, if we get closer to like something like 7.5, we are going to turn to a heading of 228 until we reach a distance of 8, and then we're going to start turning into our arc. If we turn a little bit early, then we're going to roll out a little bit early. If we, if we see that we're starting to reach the beginning of the arc and our distance is 8.5, at that point, we're not going to turn to a heading of 228. We're going to take out 10, 15 degrees. So we're only going to turn to a heading of 218 or 213, which is 10, 15 degrees less. And once we reach the distance of 8, then we're going to start turning into our arc. 
Now let's get back into the equipment. In VOR1, as I said, we're going to have the heading of 348 tuned in and we're going to leave that there. We're not going to worry about that until we turn on to the final. What's more important to us is VOR2, which is the needle, same as an ADF needle, but this is a VOR needle. It's going to be pointing to Congonia's VOR. What is the easiest way to explain this? Think about it this way. Think of it as that needle being the rope that is going to the VOR and you're holding that rope and you're flying around. That needle is always going to be 90 degrees to our heading. So if our heading is 228 where we begin the VOR, the heading of our needle is going to be 138. If our heading is 125, the 90 degree needle or that rope, remember it's like holding a rope and flying around it, the heading on our VOR needle is going to be 035. So we're keeping that needle at 90 degrees. That is the idea. So we're going to think of it that way. Our VOR needle in our VOR2, the one that's just going to point to the VOR, should be 90 degrees to our left. So now that we know where our needle should be, let's get into how do we actually fly this perfect circle around. Well, we're not going to fly a perfect circle. What we're going to do is that we're going to fly a heading for a few seconds. Then when we have to, we're going to turn 10 degrees and then we're going to fly a new heading for, for a few more seconds. So in this case, we're going to turn to a heading of uh, 228, fly for a few seconds. Then we're going to turn to a heading of 218. We're going to fly for a few seconds, heading of 208, a few seconds, 198, a few seconds. Now, how many seconds we fly on that heading depends on two things. One is on the DME of the arc. The, the bigger the DME, the longer we fly on a heading. The smaller the DME, the less we fly on a heading. The second thing that's going to matter on how long we fly on these 10 degree headings is going to be our speed. The faster we fly, the more often we have to turn. The slower we fly, less often we have to turn. Now, the reason I said how many seconds we fly, we're not going to time ourselves. There's no timing in this. The reason I said how many seconds we're going to fly is because I want you to understand that we're talking about turning every few seconds, every 10, 15, 20 seconds. It happens very quick, especially in something like the Airbus 320 when we'll be doing the approach at 160 knots. We're going to be turning every 10, 15 seconds. Now, the turns don't depend on the seconds. We're not going to time them. The turns depend on our VOR2, on our needle. So let's take a look at this. Let me, let me turn this around and let me zoom it in. Now I'm going to exaggerate this just so you guys get the idea of, of what I'm doing, of when to turn. We're actually going to use this, the VOR needle to tell us when to turn. Now this is, this is what would happen for a perfect arc with no winds. Uh, this little line, as you can see, I've made up these little lines that we're going to fly. So as the airplane starts at the beginning of the line, look at where the VOR needle is pointing. It's five degrees ahead. As we fly through to the end of this line, you see how the needle moves and now it's pointing five degrees behind our 90 degree turn. As we turn, the needle will swing and it will be pointing ahead again. And as we fly, the needle is gonna go past the 90 degree point and once it reaches five degrees, then we'll start our turn again. And we'll be doing this all around. Now, if there's no winds and we keep our speed constant, this will work perfectly. Once we throw the winds into this equation, then we're going to have to start making adjustments. The adjustment, I'm not going to get it too complicated for you guys. I'm just going to show you on a visual of uh, how we're going to adjust for the wind. If the wind is pushing us away from the arc, we're actually going to turn 10 to 15 degrees into the wind. The needle is going to be ahead of us, or what we call the needle is going to be leading us. And then as we fly, our needle of the VOR is not going to go past 90 degrees. We're actually going to go 10 degrees ahead as we fly to it. As the needle reaches 90 degrees, we're going to turn again. So we're staying ahead of it. That way, we're actually, what we're doing is, we're actually crabbing into the wind. We're not letting the wind push us out. So if we fly our regular 5 degrees before to 5 degrees after, the wind is slowly going to push us out. This way, we're compensating for the wind. If the wind is pushing us towards the VOR or towards inside the arc, we're actually going to correct 5 to 10 degrees out. The needle is actually going to trail. So we're going to go from 90 degrees to 10 degrees past 90 degrees. Then we're going to turn 10 degrees. Now the needle is back to 90 degrees again. As we fly out, the needle is moving past us 10 degrees and then we'll make our turn again. So if the wind is pushing us away from the arc, we're going to correct 10 to 15 degrees towards the arc. 
if the wind is pushing us towards the arc, we're actually going to correct 5 to 10 degrees out. Again, this is just to give you an idea of the adjustments that you're going to have to do. Now that we know what we're going to do for the arc, let's look at the rest of this approach. As we're flying the arc, we're going to hit a radial of 182 from the Congoya's VOR. Once we hit this radial of 182, that is the time to start turning onto the final. Once we start turning onto the final, at that point, we're not going to need the second VOR anymore. We're going to use VOR1, in which we have put in a heading of 348. At that point, we'll just be following that one VOR and we'll be flying straight to the airport on a heading of 348. So we're going to fly the DME arc at 5,000 feet. So at distance 8, at the 182 radial, we're going to be at 5,000 feet. Now before we get to point Letty, we can descend down to 4,500 feet. When can we start that descent to 4,500 feet? We can start that descent to 4,500 feet once we're established on a 348 heading to the VOR. So we're going to start our turn and as soon as we're established on a heading of 348 to the VOR, we're going to start our descent from 5,000 feet down to 4,500 feet. It's a basic step down descent. We've done this before many times. At 4,500 feet, we're going to maintain that until we get to Point Letty. Point Letty is a distance of 6 miles from the VOR. That is our uh, low cross. That is our final approach fix. Landing checklist, landing gear down. And that's when we begin our final descent to our minimum descent altitude, which is 3,300 feet in this case. And that's a 672 feet AGL above ground. We will fly a heading of 348 and we will get down to 3300 but no lower. We won't go below 3300 until we have the airport in sight or we have the runway lights in sight. If by the time we get to the VOR we don't see the airport, we don't see the runway, we don't see the runway lights, we'll do a missed approach. As far as the rest of the details in this approach plate, you guys can take a look at it. We've done enough of these so you guys should be able to figure out a missed approach and the other things that are being shown on this approach plate. Now, as I said before, for this approach, we're going to use the Airbus 320. We'll be coming from the Santana VOR on a heading of 138 to the Congoyas VOR. We will pick up our flight here. So let's get inside the airplane and let's fly this approach. Alright guys, so we're inside the airplane right now. We are on a heading of 138 to Congoyas VOR. We are descending to 5000 feet, the DME arc altitude. In VOR1 right now, we have tuned in the Congoyas VOR on a heading of 138. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to highlight the DME and I'm going to make it a little bigger so we can see it better in this video. I really want to emphasize the DME in this video. Okay, at this point we're about 11.2 miles away from the VOR and remember that at about 10 miles from the VOR that's when we're going to start that 90 degree right turn to enter the arc. Okay, so as I said earlier, in VOR1 we have tuned in the Congoyas VOR on a heading of 138 and we're just basically flying to the VOR on that heading. Once we start this right turn, we're going to switch the radios and I'll show you what we're going to do in just a second once we reach that 10 point mark. 10 miles. Let's start a right turn to a heading of 228 to enter the arc. As we're doing this turn in VOR1, we're going to put a heading of 348. That's our final approach heading, remember? And let's turn on the VOR2. That's going to be our needle pointing to the VOR, the needle we're going to use for our uh, turns. So right now it's 8.5, heading of 200, 8.4, and it looks like we're going to be a little bit further away, so let's just turn to a heading of about 213. Let's roll out right here until we join the arc at 8.0. Remember we talked about this a little bit earlier, if we undershoot it we're just going to fly a shorter heading. Eight point two. Let's turn to a heading of two zero zero, so we get closer into the arc. It doesn't look like eight point two is going down, so we're just going to turn a little more, ten degrees more. And here is a heading of two zero zero eight point one. Our airspeed is good. We're still descending to five thousand feet. Okay, there's eight point zero. 
Now let's look at the arc. Look at the winds. We're gonna keep the needle in front of us. Let's do another 10 degree turn. You see how we're keeping the needle ahead of us? The, how the needle is leading us? Because the wind is pushing us away from the VOR. Okay, so now we're 7.9. Let's just keep this heading. The will increase. You can see how the needle is slowly moving to our 90 degree spot. As soon as it reaches that 90 degree spot, we're gonna start another turn for another 10 degrees. Okay, there it is. Let's turn another 10 degrees. It's okay, 7.9 is acceptable. There's a heading of 180. Let's roll out. The needle is at 90 degrees still, that's alright. We're close enough so we can go a little further away. There's 8.0. Let's turn another 10 degrees. Let's put that needle ahead of us. Let it let it lead us. There's a heading of uh, 165. We're gonna turn a little more than 10 degrees. There's a heading of 165. 8.0. Needle is five degrees ahead. Here it comes to 90 degrees. And we're going to keep doing this for the whole arc. The main point is that we're going to adjust. There's a lot of adjustments going on. The main thing is we want to keep ourselves about 8 miles nautical distance or 8 miles arc from that VOR. There's another turn to a heading of 150. Let's roll out. 7.9. The needle is about to 5 to 10 degrees ahead of us. Let it lead us. Once it gets to 90, then we'll turn again. And this is pretty much how we fly the arcs. We're going to do this all the way until we're at that 182 radial from the Congoyas VOR. At that point, we're going to start our turn to intercept the heading of 348 to Congoyas VOR for our final approach. Let's turn again, uh, 7.9. And as you can see, the main point here is keeping our instrument scan going, keeping our headings, keeping our distances, knowing where the needle is, and our situational awareness. We gotta know where we are all the time. When you're a pilot, you better know where you are all the time. At this point, we are actually on a radial of about 230 from a Congoyas VOR. Where does that put us? That actually puts us southwest of the airport. So we gotta know where we are all the time. Okay, heading a 140, 7.9, let's turn again, 10 degrees, to about a heading of 130. We are keeping that needle 5 to 10 degrees ahead of us once it reaches our 90 degree point. And we are at, uh, at this point, we're at 7.8, so we got a little bit close, that's right. If we get a little bit close, like we did right now at 7.8, we're just going to keep this heading for a little bit longer. And eventually, this is going to go up to 7.9. There is 7.9, a few more seconds, and let's start a turn for another 10 degrees. As I said, this is all adjustments. The main thing here is we have to keep our instrument scan going, we have to know where we are, and pretty soon the 182 radial is gonna come in. Remember, at that 182 radial, that's when we're gonna start our turn to intercept the heading of 348. Our uh, altitude is good, we are within 200 feet, plus or minus 200 feet, always go plus if you have to. I am keeping it above uh, 100 feet above just as a plus. Okay, we are still 7.9, heading 110. 8.0, let's turn again to a heading of 100. There's that 10 degree turn. There is that uh, VOR needle leading us about five degrees. Okay, 
and here we go we are almost to the 182 radial pay attention to the VOR2 needle let's turn again and there we are 182 radial now let's make a full turn to intercept the heading of uh, 348 now at this point we're not going to need VOR2 anymore we are just going to fly a heading of 348 to the VOR our next altitude is going to be 4500 feet Let's start a descent down to 4,500 feet at this point we are established and also at this point we are pretty much doing a step down descent. At this point we know what we're doing. We've done enough of these to know that what we're doing. Okay there's 4,500 feet. Let's level off. The needle is almost centered. Looks like we're starting to break out of the clouds but not yet. We're still going by instruments. Remember the worst thing you can do is look outside and inside, outside and inside. Keep your eyes inside until we're fully out of the clouds. Let's keep that turn going, 4,500 feet. If we look up, we kind of see the runway lights ahead of us. So, we're not fully visual yet. Let's just wait until we break out of the clouds. Now, remember at point six, that's our final approach fix. At the distance of six, our landing gear is gonna come down. There's the landing gear down, landing checklist, and we can descend down to 3,300 feet. That's our minimum descent altitude. And all we're doing right now is flying a heading of 348. Alright, we're out of the clouds right now. We have the runway in sight. Okay, so now we have full visual of the runway. We're going to full visual. Uh, what I just did there, I put in our uh, final approach speed of 145. We are a little bit high because this is a non-precision approach, so we are going to go down and we're going to look at the Pappy lights. We're going to look at the Pappy lights and we're going to use the Pappy lights as our glide slope. 1,000. Uh, now you guys keep bugging me about auto braking, so I'll turn the auto brakes on. After we touch down, I'm going to show you the flight path. So stand by after the touchdown to see the flight path of this flight. And let's take a look at the flight path. And that's not too bad. As easy as it gets. Anyway guys, take care and I'll see you guys soon.